Hello. Russ, it's me. Could you come over here, please? Um, we've already been through it. It can't be worked out, so Hansel, let's just... I have a visitor in my room. He'd like to talk to you, please. Russ, it's your father. Russ, there's so much to be explained. Now's the time. He hung up. He'll be here. Sheet music and go over with Phil. What's the matter? Russ? Hey, Russ, what happened? He'll be here any minute. I'm scared. Leave it to me. He'll be hurt and angry, Vince. I don't know what he'll do. Mary, stop it. I can take care of it. It's not too late to leave. It may even be best if I explain the facts to him while you're not in the room. Gary. No. Father and son should be left alone for a while, huh? I will not leave. Mom. You understand in time. Yes. Come on. You're going to learn a lot about me, your mother, and yourself in a very little while. But I think I know you well enough to know you'll understand. Want to sit down? I first met Carrie on Christmas Day. The skating rink near Wrigley Field. She was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. I fell in love with her. I still love her. Uh, those were hard times. I got a job working for 35 cents a day for Harry LeBlanc. He taught me the meaning of the word power. Yeah. My duties, as, along with other responsibilities, was to run around to the corner bakery every morning, bring over three Danish rolls for Harry. He took a liking to me. He didn't speak a word. Of Italian, but he was fluent in French. He had a daughter, a spoiled, pampered brat. She fell for me. And before I knew it, I was married and raising Tony. Hey, look, right, you're just standing there. Can I get you something? No, don't stop. Well, I still saw Carrie. I still cared for her. I still do. Knowing all along that I could be killed if LeBlanc ever found out what I was doing behind his daughter's back. You know, Carrie got pregnant. So I took care of her and you ever since. I don't have to tell you I'd be a dead man if LeBlanc ever found out. Your mother's life would be in danger too. You're just 
standing there as if this is a total surprise to you. Now, I can't buy that, Russ. I don't want to believe it's true. But your mother was being supported, you knew that. I don't want to believe that I'm related to you. And to Tony, too. You're his half-brother. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, Vince. I uh, figured that part out. You know, I... You don't see him, you don't talk to him anymore. He misses you. Yeah, well, I guess he's got enough men in his life already. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm... I've been very proud of you. Y you know, when you came to see me about the job in Norfolk, I, you made me the happiest man on earth. I, I called up your mother just to find out whether or not she'd put you up to it. I wanted to help, Russ. I still do. You, you... You're the one that got a hold of Mitch Dunbar, aren't you? You're the one that set up the trust fund. Yeah. Well, the offer still holds. Russ, I, I want to make restitution. <laughs> oh, restitution? Yeah. Yeah, Vince. You give me back the, the last 22 years I spent without a father. I want back... All those times I got knocked around in my block because all the kids knew there wasn't anybody at home to watch out for hey, me. Hey, come on. You were the toughest kid on yeah, the Yeah, well, block. that was survival. I went back every Christmas and every birthday that I spent alone. I went back every game I ever played without somebody sitting up in the stands. You had your mother. No, you had my mother and you still do. Hey, don't you question my love for her. I'm not questioning anything about you. From the time you first married into dirty money to your last welfare check to my mother. You weren't alone. You had your mother. I didn't have a father. There's not a kid on this earth that can live through that and not feel alone. All right. Now, none of us can change what's past. But let us use what time we've got left you together. You run out of time. And there isn't going to be any restitution because there are no second chances. Not with my dreams. Why don't you let Tony be your legacy? That fits perfectly. You're broke. You haven't got a chance. There's no hope of you finishing school and becoming a doctor without some help. Now, look, I can see your nobility. I'm very touched by it, all right? But now, can we move on to some practical thinking? Mr. Man, am I getting a little bit too close? Yeah, let's... Let's think practical. Let's be practical about this. Hi, Dad! Man, how you doing? It's good to see you. Good to have you back. Hey, you want to help me through med school, Dad? Is that what you expected? You wanted me to come in here and call you dad? Well, forget it. Don't go throw any of those tears at me either. What, are you kidding me? Crying? Crying is not your privilege because it wasn't mine. I spent 22 years in a living hell with a son that was a total disappointment to me and a woman I loathed. You did it for no one but yourself. You wanted to seal your friendship with Harry LeBlanc and his money and my mother. You weren't all, didn't you, Vince? Well, you can keep your restitution. Russ! You need a father. I need a son. I'm nothing to Tony but a bank account. Yeah. Well, you mean even less to me. Hey, Doug. What brings you here? Doug, how are you? Well, you two don't know what's going on at Hollister Square, do you? What's wrong? Well, I came back from my weekend fishing trip yesterday, and I found Carpenter's version of the Berlin Wall around my office. Doug, we know what Carpenter is doing. You really believe he's putting in new sidewalks? Well, that is how his permit reads. Well, I'm really impressed how quickly he removed the old sidewalks. Any ideas how long it's going to take him to put in the new uh, ones? I've tangled with Carpenter before, and I know what you're going through. But there's nothing we can do about it. Look, why was he issued a permit in the first place? The property is his. And he has an obligation to his tenants. He has to provide for our safety and our well-being. Then tell him that. Oh, come on, Gene. You know what he's going to say? That our safety is the reason that he's putting in all these improvements. And you know that's a lie. Hollister Square is practically a ghost town now. Carpenter couldn't be happier. It's harassment, pure and simple. Doug, I cannot refuse a man the right to remodel his own property. Can't you understand that? I can understand that. You can also understand something else. You don't care about this case. And apparently, Carpenter has bought you off, too. I'm 
glad you're back. I was worried you left in such a hurry. I'm sorry. I'm late for my rehearsal with the band. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, you go to your rehearsal with your band, and uh, we'll talk about it later. Well, where'd you go? See my mother. <sighs> yeah, maybe we better not talk about it. Well, how do I look? You look fine. What are you all dressed up for? Phil wanted to see if I could be dazzling in a refined sort of way. Who's Phil? <laughs> Phil is the leader of the pack. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you sick? I met my father today. Right there in the hotel room with Mom. One big happy family. Russ, what are you talking about? I said my father wanted to see me. But you said he was dead. You told me he was dead. No, I said my mom told me he was dead. That's what I said. I knew she was lying. What? Nothing. Look, um, I really can't be late for this rehearsal with the band. You know, our first gig is coming up real soon and everything. Don't be mad at me, okay? But we'll talk about it when I get back, okay? There's donuts on the counter. There's milk in the fridge. Becky. My dad is Vince Cardello. You asked me why you wanted to take care of me all those times and who had enough money to support my mom for so long? Well, there's your answer. Oh, oh. Russ. Look, I really hate to leave you right now. Really, but... Look, if I lose this job with the band, we're both out of luck. We'll talk about it as soon as I get home. Okay? Okay? I'll hurry home. I will run home. I promise. All right? Bye. Bye. So I leased a suite of offices for the Hollister Mall Corporation. Already? Already? I'm overdue now. You know, it really is a little embarrassing when interested retailers have to contact you through your lawyer. I've needed a base of operation for weeks. <laughs> well, it sounds like a gold mine already. I hope it doesn't fall through. Well, with uh, solid financial backing, who can miss? Oh, Charles. <laughs> You seem to be losing your subtlety as you get older. Well, we haven't talked about your interest in my project for quite a while, and I think that uh, with the added incentive of now that I'm going to be using Hollister Square, we can give Miriam... A... Gainful employment. Well, I think that's an extremely worthwhile cause. And with uh, Nancy and Miriam working right along with me in the new offices, I can't think of a better arrangement. Well, neither can I. And I'm ready to invest now. You just name your terms and arrangements, and I'll call up Mitch Dunbar and have the money transferred immediately. You know, Helen, uh, my lawyer, Harold Webster, has proven himself to be very capable in handling business affairs, perhaps... Uh... Oh, Charles, I'm giving you the capital. At least let me retain my lawyer. Well, fine, but uh, my one term is the power of attorney over your assets. Yes, well, you shall have it. I shall contact Mitch Dunbar immediately, and you shall have the power by the very next day. <laughs> you know, you surprise me, Helen. I'm almost tempted to uh, question your enthusiasm. It's, it's just too good to be true. I am sure that Hollister Mall is going to be a very successful and legally sound project. And so I am ready to help whenever I can. On three. One, two...
Doesn't she look great on stage? Yeah, they've been going out for more than four hours now. What's taking so long? Hey, I've seen Phil rehearse his band for nine hours straight. Well, which one's Phil? does that when they're on stage. You have to sing to somebody. Why him? You want me to sing to whoever's sitting in the front row? No, I'd prefer that you didn't sing at all. Russ, stop it. What about the hugging when you finish, huh? Is that part of the act, That's too? a natural reaction to when you finally get something right after rehearsing it for 35 minutes. Yeah, and how many have you rehearsed and finished since you've been here? Six or seven, I don't know. Why? Becky, you said you'd come running home. I will. At four in the morning. Look, Russ, I don't need this right now. Becky, can we go over some lyric changes? No, yeah. she can't go over any lyric Russ, changes. Russ. How are you doing? Phil, I'll be there in a minute. Thanks. Look it. I know you've had a hard day, yeah, and I've had a hard it. day, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'd better just leave each other alone for now, okay? You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. Becky, don't come running home, okay? Enjoy your nightcap with Phil. Russ. Bye, Phil. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's a sailor. <laughs> you know I'm against this, Helen. In this case, I haven't come to ask for advice. <laughs> that never stops me from giving it. <laughs> well, I believe in the Hollister Mall. The work Charles is doing has made him a new man. Well, trust in that man's absolutely amazing. Well, this time it's warranted. I'm, I'm not giving a handout. I'm making an investment. Hmm. Why, Charles has interested retailers banging down the door. Well, so he tells you. Now, Mitch. Now, Helen, have you seen any of those interested parties? No. But Charles is moving into a new suite of offices. Well, this proves that he has a growing business that needs its own base of operations. Well, I'll bet that suite is nowhere near Hollister Square. Why do you say that? Have you seen the place lately? No, why should I? Charles hasn't started building yet. No, but he sure has started tearing down. Well, it's a shambles. Well, so Charles is a little over-enthusiastic. What could that hurt? Well, you wouldn't say that if you were one of the people still trying to live there or do business there. My dear, most trustworthy lawyer and friend, are you going to draw up that power of attorney all right, or to... All right, all right, I'll do it tonight. <laughs> Dear lady. I only hope that someday you're not going to regret this. Hello, kid. What's the matter? Did you uh, pick the lock? Uh, I was half hoping it was going to be your girlfriend. Just leave. You give a lot of orders, don't you? You know, uh, you could learn something just by listening. I mean it, Vince. I don't want you here. I was hoping you'd be over your bravado by now. Your uh, little apartment intrigues me. Four empty peanut butter jars, an old aspirin bottle. Old Tess with lousy scores, not exactly a picture of domestic joy. Now we survive. I want you enjoying life, not surviving. Right, you put mom in the lap of luxury all those years. She lives better than you do. Uh. Now look, Russ, I'm willing to front you for a loan to finish medical school. <laughs> yeah, I know how your loans work. Yeah, things are different now. They've obviously changed. That's mm -hmm. past history. I love it. 
you offering me money with one condition that I live alone. You making that kind of restriction. It was your mother's idea. No, Mom didn't know Becky and I were living together. All right, all right. So I didn't want her ever to know about it, all right? What I want to know is I want to know how you found out. You've been watching me, haven't you? Checking up occasionally is a little more accurate. What's the matter? You afraid I'm going to go to the police? No, Russ. I'm just not as evil as you want to believe. No, you're worse. You disappoint me, Russ. You're not facing facts. I disappoint you. Not facing facts. Well, the fact is that you want me to kick Becky out before you sign your little checks. Well, I won't do it, so leave. All right, forget the condition. The money's yours. No strings. Just call the registrar. Get me the amount. That's all you have to do. No. Come on, Russ. Life is more than just a peanut butter sandwich. What do you know about life? Loan sharking? Pushing dope? Numbers? Your business is death. That's how you make your money. And I'll tell you something. I'm not going to start a career off saving lives from money that was earned by sucking life out of people. Now get out of here. You know, you're not the man I thought you were. You better look into your own heart first. <laughs>